Okay, let us now look at question two. Let's read the question together. A student tries to determine the specific latent heat of vaporization of a liquid by an electrical method. A heater is used to boil the liquid, and when the liquid is boiling, the mass of liquid vaporized per second is measured at two different powers for the heater. One is at a power of P1 of 40 watts, and the other at power of P2, 80 watts. The liquid is vaporized at a rate of 0 0.0417 grams per second and 0 0.0893 grams per second. Now, to do this question, basically, what we simply use is conservation of energy. In this case, the energy that's supplied by the heater, what it does, it goes into vaporizing the liquid. Then one may actually ask, then why is there a need to actually carry out the experiment twice? Um, this is basically be because when we write this particular equation, we have assumed that there's no heat loss to the surrounding. But since there are two power ratings, it's most likely like that we are trying to conduct a more um, accurate experiment. And so for this case, we shall assume that the heat loss to the surrounding is not negligible. Okay, writing that in terms of the power rating, what we will have is that the power of the heater multiplied by the time which we use to carry out the experiment must be equal to the energy used for vaporizing the liquid and since it's solely used for vaporizing the liquid, it would be just M times L which is the specific latent heat of vaporization of the liquid, which is what we want to actually determine here, plus heat loss to the surrounding. Now, you also notice what we are given here is actually the rate at which mass is lost. So, what we need to do is we need to divide the whole equation by T, so we will have P equals to M over T times L plus Q loss, the rate at which heat is lost. And in general, this is the rate, and this rate is actually dependent solely on the temperature of the liquid and surrounding. And since it doesn't change, so we can assume that this rate is actually constant. And let me just let this be actually equals to H. Alright, so it makes it neater. And what we simply have is we have P is equals to M over T times L plus H. So we've got two cases here. So we can write down two equations. For case 1, we can just simply write P1 is equals to M1 over T1 L plus H. That I'll call it equation 1. And for case 2... We have P2 equals to M2 over T2L plus H, which is 2. Then after that, what we simply can do is we can take 2, subtract 1. This will help me to get rid of H. And I will have P2 minus P1 equals to M2 over T2 minus M1 over T1. I'll take out L and that becomes L is common. And re-expressing, what we will have is L is equals to P2 minus P1 over M2 over T2 minus M1 over T1. And we can substitute in the values and we will get, let me take a look at it, uh, we will get 80 watts minus 40 watts from the question and we will have 0 0.0893 the question gives it in terms of grams per second so converting grams to kg is multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 subtract 0 0.0417 times 10 to the power 
four one seven times ten to the power minus three and punching it into the calculator and converting you will have four eight four zero kilojoules per kg and eight four zero joules per kg is option a and that's it